React Hook form is a performant, flexible, and extensible forms with easy to use validation. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to validate user data using React Hook form. So right here, we'll be able to validate when the focus is out. So when I click on this input field, then click out here, then you'll see username is required. We'll also validate during the on change event. So when I try to type something here, you will see username must be at least three characters wrong. And also during the form submit. So when I try to submit, you will see all these other fields are required. I'll also show you how to validate using regex. So when I try to type something at the password, you will see that we have a very strong validation going on here. At least six characters wrong, one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and one special case character. So we must meet all this for this input field to be varied. So I'll try to type, um, this is having uppercase and lowercase. Let me type a number. Let me type a special case character. And now that input field is varied. So let's just dive right in. So right here at my code editor, I already have a basic form with three inputs and one select. And then we have another input here with type of submit to submit our form. And I have the styles right here at app.css. They are not much, you can actually like type them out. That is for the form, input and select, the paragraph for displaying the error, and the input focus, just uh, about 30 lines of code. And now, the first thing that we need to do is to install React uh, hook form. So once you create a React app, uh, all you need to do is to run this code right here at your app, npm install React hook form, and this will install React hook form library. The next step that we need to do is what we call uh, registering our inputs so that React hook form can have access to the data for both our validation and also submitting the data. So the next step is to import a hook from React hook form and the hook is called use form hook. So right here, I will import the use form hook from React hook form. And then we can get a register and uh, also handle submit from these uh, use form hook. So right here, I can just say const and then I'll destructure register and also I'll get handle submit uh, function and these will come from the use form hook okay so I'll set this to be equal to the use form like that now we can make use of this register to register our inputs at our first input this is how we register the inputs I can use these curly brackets and then I'll spread register like that. And we can invoke it and pass the name for this particular input. And I'll give it the name of username. And then we can have the same for email. So I'll just like copy this one so that I move a bit fast. I paste it here and I can change this username to email. I'll do the same for password. And I'll also do the same for select. So for this one, I'll say gender. Now, another cool thing with uh, React hook form is that we can make use of this function, handle submit uh, during our on submit event. So at our form, we can call the on submit event. And right here, we will call handle submit. And once we invoke it, we will have access to a callback function together with the data. So right here, we can pass a callback function in form of an arrow function. And the cool thing is that now right here, we will have access to the data. And we can be able to log that data to the console. So I can console.log of data. Now I'll save that. And... Let's go ahead and test this. So I'll go to the browser. This is what we currently have. I'll just inspect uh, so that we go to the console right here. And let me zoom in a bit. 
I think that is good enough. I refresh to make sure that everything is refreshed. And now right here, when I type the name, ciao, and hit submit, you'll see that we can be able to collect the data. So when I expand these, you'll see that username here is having ciao, whatever we typed here. But the rest are empty. So let's select gender here to be male, submit, and now you'll see that gender is male. Password the same and the email. So I'll just type anything for email and password and then hit submit. And now you'll see that those values are corrected right here. Now, the next step is to validate these inputs. Now to apply validation in our inputs, it's very easy with the React hook form. And what we need to do is just after the name here, we include a comma. And then we can pass an object with various um, form validations. For example, for the username, we can just say that right here, it is required. So I set required to true. Also, I can use a comma and I can say, let the mean length to be three. And this way, I have already applied some basic form validation to this particular input field. So when I save this, and then come back to our form right here. You'll notice that when I try to submit these, we won't get any data right here and it will automatically focus our username. So I'll click on submit and you'll see the input focus comes here and we don't have anything right here. But so far we can't like see any errors. So how can we do that? So right here we can bring in something else, which is the form state and what we will do, we'll destructure the errors from the form state like that. And I can log these errors to the console. So right here, I should include a comma. And then down here, I'll say console.log uh, of errors. And actually, I can like include some text to make sure that this is the... Uh, object the errors object that we are like logging to the console so i'll go ahead and save and now i'll come back right here and you'll see that we are logging that errors object right here and when i try to submit you'll notice that when i expand this we have username at our errors object and this username uh yes the type is required but we don't have any message so how can we include a message so for required we can just actually uh repress this true with the message so for example i can say username is required like that and then i'll save and then now when i come back right here uh try to submit now scroll down come to the username here expand the username you'll see that the message here is username is required and then the type is required but for um, mean length and max length uh, it's not being displayed yet so let me just type one character try to submit now that we have included that now whatever we'll see at the username is for our uh, type is mean length now but the message is nothing so for mean length to include the message uh, since we still need this value to specify the value what we can do is to pass an object here and then we will specify the value using value property. So I'll say value is three, use a comma, and then I can include the message. So I'll go ahead and type a message, uh, which will be username must be at least three characters wrong, just like that, okay? So this is for min length. Optionally, you can also include a max length. So I can duplicate that and include a max length. So when you, ex you exceed uh, a certain number of characters, then it will show you an error. So let me say 30, then username must be at most. And I'll say 30 characters long. And at least I think it's not spelled that way. Uh, maybe it's that way or maybe not. But yeah, you get the point, okay? And... Now, when I save this, come back here. Uh, let me just hit refresh. 
and username is required so we get that error right there that username is required when we include a, a character there try to submit then what we get is the mean length so the mean length must be at least three characters long and we can perform validation for the rest of these other fields and then uh, whatever we'll do next is to just display the error message so let's move on to the email right here now for the email after the name email we include an object and in here uh, we will say required and we include the message of email is required email is required and then i include a comma and the good thing now with uh, uh, the use hook form we can include a regex pattern for us to validate the email so right here i can say pattern and then i'll include an object and the value here will now be our pattern so for the pattern you can google email regex uh, anywhere on the internet you can get it from stack overflow or from any other website but the good thing is that i have provided you on my website so i leave a link to my website at the description section below and then you can just copy this email regex and then paste it to the pattern so you can paste it there and that is the email regex and then i'll use a comma and then now down here we should include a message for the email uh, pattern right here and whatever i'll say is that email must be a valid email email must be valid okay and that is email now let's go to password so right here i include a comma and right here we can set it to be required that is inside the object here so i'll say required and i'll say password is required and then i'll have a pattern so pattern this is again legex you can like you know search a legex from anywhere in the internet so i'll just copy that legex and then i'll paste it here and now we need a message okay uh i have actually like messed up i'll just control z we should include an object here with the value and pass the regex there so that we can have the message here for our regex so now the message for this one uh, might be long so i'll just go ahead and type it out so that is all i'll include there and then finally we have uh, the select so for the select i'll just make it to be required nothing much so right here i'll just include a comma after the gender and we'll say required and the message will be gender is required and this is how you can perform validation with a react hook form now we have the messages there and let's see so i'll come to our app i will refresh and then i'll just try to submit and now when we expand this you'll see we have email gender password and username you'll see here password is required username is required all these are required now let's see if uh, the legex is working for the password i'll just type anything try to submit come here and for the password you'll see password must be at least six characters wrong that wrong message that we included let's include like a valid password with uppercase number and also special character and try to submit and come here for the password you'll see now the password is not available in our errors so the the, the uh, legex is working pretty nice so next let's display the error messages now the next thing that we need to do is just to display the error message and we have all our error messages inside our errors object so all we need to do is to specify the error message after every input field so right here i'll just include the curly brackets and i'll say errors and then the name of our input field which is this one right here which we included at register so right here we'll have errors 
dot username dot username and then we will use what we call optional chaining just in case the error message uh, does not exist so we won't like you know uh, break the application and all we pass right here is message okay and we can test that one out first so i'll go back right here and now you'll see right here username is required pretty nice and uh, what i forgot to do is to include this inside a paragraph which i had like already styled so let me just pass the paragraph there move this in there save and now when i look at this it looks much better username is required and whenever we try to like you know change you'll see username must be at least three characters long so i'll just do the same for email and for password pretty easy so i'll just like you know copy this one after the email i'll paste that there and instead of username here now i'll say email whichever name you included here the same for password so after the input field there i'll paste that one and i'll include the password right here and then finally after select i'll just include the uh the error message here with the name as gender so i'll go ahead and save to auto format and also to save everything and now whenever i come here you'll see all these input fields are required Actually, this is not displaying <laughs> the email one. It's not displaying an error. And let's see what's wrong. So I missed the spelling for email. So I spelled it correctly. And now it's there. Good. Pretty nice. Now, another thing is that when I refresh, you'll notice that uh, when I click here, click out, it's not validating the input field. So until we submit, that is when it's validating the input fields. So all I need to do is to pass an object in our use form right here. Pass an object. I'll pass a property called mode, full colon, and I'll say all. So that means that it will validate uh, on blah. That is like when we get out of focus during the submit and during the on change event okay i haven't saved this file i'll go ahead and save and now let's see click there click out let me refresh uh click there click out there now it's working good so whenever we like have focus out uh, we are also validating so let's test everything it's validating during on change email should be varied email so let's see we should include an at it should end with some form of a domain name the password should be varied with a special character with a number gender should be required so if i try to do that gender is required mail it's now varied so everything is working out as expected and another thing you can now like hide the password so um right here uh, we have the password you can include another property here type to be password okay so that now it's hidden like that pretty nice so that is it about this video if you enjoyed the content in this video uh, consider subscribing and also giving a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one